Hey guys, welcome back to Building Built Right. Matt here. This week and next week, we're gonna kind of step back into our F-150 build project a little bit. As you can see, the bed of our truck has some panels in it already. We, of course, are using this truck for research and development. We're continuously changing the setup in it, but that's one of the great things about our bedside racks. Uh, and some of our other products is that they are modular. So uh, this week, actually, I'm getting ready to take this truck on a family vacation to the Outer Banks. And for that, I would set it up a little bit differently than I would for just everyday use. So we've got the panels emptied here. I'm gonna talk through what we're, how we're gonna set the truck up for this trip and why. We're gonna finish installing the bedside racks. We're gonna get some of the gear that I wanna carry on those racks. And then we're gonna install a Diamondback tonneau cover that our friends over at Diamondback sent us, along with some of the Molly panels that we designed and manufactured along with them. So that's gonna help us keep everything in the bed really well organized and really safe and secure on this trip. Next week, we'll get into the interior of the truck. So let's get started. <laughs> okay, so one of the exciting things about this vacation for me is that uh, we're staying at a house that is only accessible via the beach and sand dunes. So a part of that, and again, it's not super dangerous or anything, but a part of that is um, I do want to be prepared if we get stuck or if somebody that we're with gets stuck to help them out. So part of that is going to be we're going to carry traction boards, we're going to carry a shovel, and uh, our friends at Power Tank sent us a whole bunch of gear that's gonna help us get aired up after we air down, leaving the beach. So I'm gonna put the power tank on this side. Um, I know that the power tank, you're really not supposed to mount horizontally, so we're gonna mount it at an angle here using some of the parts that they've made specifically to interface with our panels. We're gonna mount a shovel over on the driver's side across the two panels. Uh, the traction boards, we, we may either mount on our built right bar system. You can see I've got the piece of extrusion here. So we may mount those traction boards on that or I was thinking about maybe mounting them to the underside of the cover, uh, maybe in the front here where they're sort of out of the way until you really need them. So I'm going to start with getting this final uh, bedside rack on. We're going to keep this open because our power tank stuff doesn't come until next week. All right, so I'm going to get this panel back on. I'm going to attempt to do it hanging over the side of the bed here so you can see what I'm doing. So I am going to, as I do with just about anything I build ever, get everything sort of loosely. Not a bad idea if you're taking these on or off or even the first time you're installing them to put some anti-seize on these. Um, from the factory, these are thread forming screws. Uh, we also sell uh, hardware kits as well. So those threads are just not quite as well refined sometimes as if they were tapped. No big deal, but anti-seize is good insurance. So one thing to keep in mind, and of course it's not too hard to, re to adjust this again later, but that diamond back cover is going to have that center piece right here with some clamps. So I'm, that's part of the reason I'm keeping the shovel lower versus bringing it right up tight to the bed rail. So I still think we're in good shape, but that's one of the considerations. All right, bit of a sanity check before we lock things in here. That's looking pretty good to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the rubber clamps in. Okay, so as I'm getting this set up, previously I would have mounted the shovel just like I mentioned, like this, because it's easier to grab. But because we're gonna have all of my family's stuff and bags and gear coming in and out of the back, the spade of this shovel is kind of would be in the way here. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna quickly flip these mounts and tuck the spade of the shovel up in here, but it's gonna make the bed a lot more usable for us. So I'm gonna flip these around. So next up, I'm gonna install the bar uh, extrusion across the uh, bulkhead of the truck there. I'm gonna take the shovel off so it's not in the way as we're doing that. And uh, the goal is to figure out where to mount the traction boards. I think what I may do is put the bar in here and we'll set up some pouches, but then I may, may, I may wait on the traction boards until we have the Diamondback cover on here to see. I kind of like the idea of putting them under this front cover because they'd be really out of the way. I just don't know how hard that's going to be to access if we do need them. So we'll do the bar, we'll put the cover on, and then we'll kind of reassess the situation. I'm getting the hardware kind of prepped in the bar rail here to set it into the brackets. 
I'm gonna kind of breeze through this. We do have a start to finish install guide. If you're kind of curious about learning more of this product, that'll be the way to do so. And we'll include that link in the, in the uh, comments, the description. One thing I'll note too on some of our parts, in this particular truck, if you see rust, things like that, part of it is that we are constantly trying different prototypes and different, different mounts. Sometimes those are mild steel and we don't actually powder coat them for testing. So that rust ends up on our panels. But uh, I'm not gonna bore you or be wasteful and replace all this stuff with brand new just so that it looks pretty. That's not the goal here. Worked. <laughs> oh, <feels> so manly. <laughs> okay. So a quick shout out to Diamondback. I got all excited with my pry bar and a hammer to blast this crate apart. I didn't get to create as much destruction, but it came off really nice and easily, which I know uh, these crates can be a different experience than that. So nice to see them taking care of sort of that customer experience. And I can already tell it's packaged very well inside the crate also, which if you guys know saving parts, we're careful of it when we ship stuff. It really sucks to have stuff show up damaged. It can delay you weeks or months if the stuff's not in stock. So it's just nice to see another company um, taking care of their customers' experience like we do, so. Yeah. All right, so this is what we got from our friends at Diamondback. We've had these covers on other trucks, so we knew that we like them and we knew it would be a great choice for this project. Obviously we have the cover here. This is an HD cover with their smooth finish uh, versus the um, diamond plate. I kind of like the smooth, it matches our products a little bit better. This does have the anchors installed. You can, you, that's an option, but I didn't do that in my last truck. And I found a couple points where having those anchors installed would have been nice. They also hooked us up with a full line of the Yakima rack. So we have the front runner rack on my AT4. We're gonna try the Yakima stuff this time. And then of course, a couple of lights and we'll throw a couple of our uh, Diamondback and Biltright collaboration Molly panels on as well. So I'm gonna do the Yakima stuff. We'll start getting the cover installed and then we'll figure out how we want to kind of outfit from there. No, I don't want to say I'm surprised to see you reading the directions, but. I'm, I'm not a guy that skips the directions. We have enough customers like that. And they're always the ones that call and have problems. I'm, all, I'm always a direction skimmer. The installation of the cover is seriously like, that's, that's like the easiest part. Uh, it's installing the rack onto the cover because what it's going to have us do, and this is why I'm reading the directions, there's going to be a specific location where this like fits and doesn't interfere with the structure underneath the cover. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to drill the cover and mount, <clears throat> mount through the cover. Oh. But you obviously only get one shot at drilling, so you want to make sure you get this located correctly. Yeah. Basically the first step in mounting this Yakima stuff to the Diamondback cover is to mount these rails. Uh, if your cover is already on the truck, you probably would just leave it on the truck and do this. That's what I did on my AT4 to mount the front runner stuff. But because I haven't installed this cover yet, it's kind of nice to be able to walk all the way around this to be able to get a good look at things and, and uh, not be reaching over a truck. So I'm going to lay this out. I'm going to drill those first holes on both sides and then we'll check back in. So I've got my rail sitting up here where I think I kind of want to drill. And then the next step is just to look under the cover and make sure that there's nothing. There's either these reinforcement studs here the HD cover happens to have two of them. And then there's also the latch mechanism and all sorts of other things. So you just wanna make sure before you drill that you're not gonna be drilling down into anything. Um, and then you need some clearance underneath here for the size of the, the nuts that go on the bottom of the cover. This is all covered in the instruction manual and I know it because I read it. Uh, but just kind of a reminder, make sure you know what you're drilling into. Slip this into the end here, put the fastener through it, and then I'm gonna reach under, and I'm tightening this just to a little snug, but so that I can still rotate this. Do the same thing on the other side. All right, so now what we're gonna do is take a measurement from here and up front, make sure those are equal, and then we'll take measurements from the outside corners to make sure they are square, and then we'll mark the uh, other holes for drilling. So this is like an interesting thing with this cover and I found the same thing when I was installing it on the AT4 is that you would assume that these are, the edges of the cover are parallel, but they're not, just like your bed rails are not. Mm. Okay. So from like ridge 
Oh, we'll call it from anchor to anchor. On this side, 68 and a half. And then up here, which is the very front of the cover, it's 70. So it has a taper to it, gotcha. Yeah, so if you're just measuring from the edge of the cover to the rail, your rails, in this case, would be splayed out like that. Mm -hmm. So now that we've locked in these two points, I'm bringing the fronts in. So that they are parallel. So versus. that the rails are parallel. Yeah, That's gotcha. important, otherwise you won't be able to slide them. That would be a very easy thing to, to get wrong. All right, so we've got the uh, two kind of track bars, I guess, uh, mounted to the front part of our cover here. We're gonna move on to the back part of the cover, the rear cover, and then uh, following the same procedure, then we'll get them mounted up. Five and three eighths. We're there. Cool. Somehow. All right, so this is the rear part of the cover. We got the tracks on here too. Now I've broken into the Diamondback start here box. A couple of nice decals and then a die cut Diamondback decal. That one might make its way onto the truck. And then some nice install guide sheets. This is great. So you're gonna attach the two panels, position the whole cover as one piece, and then use two of these clamps on each side with a 916 socket. Retighten after a week of use. I did have that experience with mine. Hmm. It goes into your pen first. Is it straight? Is it straight? Or are you out of order? Just like that. I want to make sure that in the locked position, this is not contacting the bedside. Slide it all the way back. Looks like it's not going to interfere with our panels. So there's these cables that they want us to put on that attach this panel to the centerpiece. Mm -hmm. Like a safety. Tether or something? Yeah, same thing as the that little catch bar over there that keeps it from opening too far. All right, so now we're moving on. I've installed the, uh, they call these the landing pads loosely. Now I'm working on figuring out the skyline towers, which are presumably gonna attach to the landing pads here and hold our crossbar. So I'm gonna make some sense of this and then install both crossbars and get to it. Day two of setting up the F-150 for this trip. Uh, what we're gonna do today is get the max tracks mounted on the built right uh, bar, the bulkhead utility rail up in the front. We're gonna mount some tack plates, some molly panels to it, and then we'll mount the max tracks to that. And then we're gonna get the molly panels set up on the Diamondback cover. So I'm gonna start with the bar up the bulkhead. All right, you guys, Matt had to run out and take a call. So I installed these tech plates. Um, I'm gonna cinch them down here, and then we're gonna get started mounting these quick fist, quick fists with the uh, traction boards. We're not gonna be using these riser mounts that we make. We're just gonna be using the quick fist clamp um, just to keep everything tucked up nicely against the cab wall. All right, tech plates are all installed. We have two bumpers at the top of each. So there's not gonna be any rattling going on there. Ready for us to put on those max tracks. So we're gonna go ahead and take off the built right riser mount.
All right, now we're gonna be mounting this right to that panel. Six in on that top raw molly. We'll see how that works. <laughs> All right, we finally got them in. I had an audience. Two quick fists on the top, and then the two on the bottom weren't gonna work too well, so we're gonna use a bungee cord just to lash down. All right, so now that the Max tracks are mounted, thank you for the help, Max. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go ahead and install our Molly panel on the Diamondback cover here. I'm gonna keep it kind of tight to this support over here, and then I'm gonna try and get it kind of centered and parallel all right, so we've got a smaller drill bit on. I'm going to drill once here as a pilot hole, and then I'm going to follow it up with a 3 8 inch drill bit. I'm just going to take one of each of the well nuts, put them into these holes we created. Grab a washer, slip a bolt in there, reach through, get it started, and I'll get each of the four started before I tighten them all down. All right, so kind of wrapping up uh, the setup here a little bit, getting this pouch into place. This is our uh, recovery strap. I'll either stuff another pouch down here or hang one here with some soft shackles and uh, gloves, things like that. And then our power tank should be here next week and we'll be in pretty good shape. It looks great. They could go into the center panel and be kind of hidden. All right, so the last thing we gotta do, final touch, is to put that uh, bulb gasket that Diamondback includes on the top of the bulkhead here to close the gap. All right, so that is it for this week. We got our bedside rack panels on, we got the Diamondback cover on, Diamondback and built right Molly panel on, as well as our bulkhead rail with the Max Tracks mounted. So we're basically ready here with the exception of our power tank stuff, which is gonna show up next Monday. So we'll add that to the next video. Next week, you'll see us also tackle the inside of this truck too. We'll do seatback Molly probably move my kids' car seats in and get everything all set up for a kind of road trip duty. So that is what you can find next week. We'll see you Monday.